Welcome to the Friendly Ties podcast. Uh, today, we are going to be talking about Union Station. Uh, this is a new Cube Rails game that's going up on Kickstarter soon, or now, or maybe it happened in the past, if you're listening to this later on. Uh, I'm joined today by my friends Anastasia, Nick, and Travis. And Travis, in addition to being my friend, also designed this game. So that's a little bit of context for you. Um, before we uh, go into all this, I want to mention that we did film a full playthrough of this, and we're going to spoil that playthrough a lot, <laughs> like right from the very beginning. So if you're at all interested in uh, in watching this, then I suggest maybe you watch that first and then jump into this. Um, yeah, so let's actually start this thing off real quick before I jump to other people with like a one minute overview of what this game is for a little bit of context. Um, in this game, we are just buying and selling stocks in five different railroad companies, and we can also lay track, which means we put cubes on the board, and when they hit certain spots, that increases the stock price. So on your turn, you buy a stock, or you sell a stock, or you lay track, and um, yeah, that's that's pretty much the the gist of the game. You want to have the most money when the game is over, and every stock is worth the value that it is. So you want to have high value stock, and you hope that people don't sell your stock. Uh, so with that in mind, I think let's um, start actually talking about this game. Um, I want to actually throw the ball to Anastasia first because this is not only the first time you've played this game, but it's the first time you've played any Cube Rails game or potentially a train game. Period. Right. 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 I mean, do we count? Do we count Ticket to Ride as a train game? <laughs> it depends I mean, on who you talk to. <laughs> yes. It has trains. Yes. I played Snowdonia. It has trains. Um, but no, this is definitely my first Cube Rails game, which is, of course, if you've watched any of John's content for the last six months or so, or been his friend for the last six months or so, you've heard a lot about Cube Rails games. <laughs> I can't help myself. And so they, are, they have kind of become this, like... Myth mythical creature you know like when are we going to play a cube rails game um so i was really excited to play this and i'm really curious we talked a little bit about this in the play but i'm like really curious to hear how this differs from the traditional cube rails games because you guys kind of intimated that it is sort of different from them um but i mean I mean, I thought this was fabulous i had a really fun time i know that i think i played it a little bit differently um but I'm, what I'm most curious about is I, so if you watch the play, you'll see that um, I, I just bought and sold stock the whole game. Right. And that's all I did. No track lane for um, you. No track lane, which, am I correct in understanding that track lane is kind of the point of a Cube Rails game? I feel like maybe <laughs> I didn't play a Cube Rails game. I think maybe I'm not, I haven't, I still need to do that. I, I think the stock is the point and the, the laying the track is the vehicle that manipulates it. So you're not, I, I don't think that that's as far off or as strange as it might seem um, for games. But one thing that's uh, maybe not different about Union Station, but it's in the certain class. Like there's a lot of Cube Rails games where the stocks are static or they only ever go up or they have kind of fixed prices. Um, and this one is is one that's like out for blood, right? Like if I sell my stock, it devalues all of your stocks. And so that I think aspect of it allows you to play the stock market game and just lean into that explicitly. Um, in addition, this game also rewards you for buying stock. It increases the stock price of that. Um, and I think one of the things that's unique about Union Station is that, that how much your stock share price goes up is variable based on how long that stock has been sitting in play for. And so that uh, makes it actually pretty powerful to buy stock. So I, I think that it made a lot of sense for this game, but it, it depends on how they're structured. Now, people listening to this might be familiar with Nick and Anastasia from the one single episode that we've put out before this. Uh, but we also have a guest here. Uh, that is Travis. Thank you so much for joining us. Hey, thanks for being here. Thanks for being here. That's not right. Thank you for being here. Thank you for playing with me and inviting me to come on this show. Yeah, I've played, obviously, I've played a bunch of Cube Rails games, right? Um, and so just to kind of go back to your original question about what makes it different, I mean, really, there are, goodness, I mean, you can't really categorize like there's there, there's sock games and there are route building games. But I mean, gl globally, that's kind of what it is, right? So a lot of Cube Rails games are either one or the other. Um, route building um, would be, you know, things like Chicago Express, um, Ride the Rails, those. And then you have ones that are really that are stock driven. Um, recent ones would be Iberian Gage from Amabel and Capstone. Um, Union Station came about as I wanted something that had like this kind of funky, weird uh, stock value manipulation stuff. Um, because I would, I, funny enough, I was actually, uh, 
designing this game in tandem with another game that was almost all entirely route building. And so I was like, I want to go whole hog the other direction and I want to make it very much about stocks. And um, the, the way all this came about is that there is, there's this cube rails, right? So we talked about cube rails earlier, uh, whenever we were recording about how cube rails is kind of this very loose genre of games that come that John Bohr kind of made popular with winsome games. Um, and the, the intro to this is because a lot of this came from this game called the Erie Railroad, which um, is kind of loosely a cube rails game in the sense that there are stocks, but there's actually not even a map or, and there's actually not even a, uh, cubes in the game it's a card or game. whatever right so it's, this is the it, weirdest it's up. It's a genre up game. of games guys like every time i don't understand every time you guys talk about cube rails you're like okay cube rails there's cubes and railroad track and then you start describing it to me and you're like well this game's all about shares and oh the first one didn't even have a map like i'm like what, <laughs> like, what? <laughs> still mythical and, and so all of it but it's true though and so but but all of um but like Erie railroad is this game that it just has like 30 shares that are just shuffled face down and it's just this weird auction game and i absolutely love it it is bonkers and mean and everything all put together but i thought what if what if there was that game but actually had route building and actually you could see the value of the company increase and decrease as you go and kind of had some more play with that um and that's really where a lot of union station came from was just this idea of let's see let's see kind of this weird auction game but the interesting thing is that i play with a lot of people who um who hate auctions and they hate auctions because they can't properly um evaluate a company so if you have an opening auction and you're just like well it's going to be i got 30 bucks i'll i'll pay 14 dollars. that's it that seems like a good amount well part of the reason why union the, the way that i designed union station was because of where the dividend payouts are are pretty strategic in the sense of you kind of you know you kind of set the initial value for that company a couple below then maybe you could do a little bit of building and go in there and then you get a payout quick and easy and just stuff like that so it's just a lot of it was very intentional because of the people that i game with um didn't like how a lot of cube rails games played out because of auctions and i really kind of wanted to make it a little more to their liking maybe i could play games with people that i played games with in person but you know all this came about over over quarantine so i didn't play games with them anyway <laughs> yeah that's um that's a really interesting point um like from a general perspective on cube rails i mean yeah it's a, it's a very loose thing so some of them have cubes some of them don't some of them well i guess they all have rails but like to catch the big bucket <laughs> most or many cube rails have auctions the question is how many auctions do they have many cube rails I, I think pretty much all of them have stocks although that's not like, truly the case there are a couple that don't um most of them have track laying but that's not necessarily always the case and some like erie railroads <laughs> uh, and also uh, dual gauge on the other side of the spectrum don't have cubes at all one of them doesn't have a map and the other one has you laying like individual pieces of track instead of cubes uh, i remember reading somewhere online when i first started this deep dive down the rabbit hole about like what is a cube rails game i, I found something that said uh, a cube rails game is one with a map where when you put a cube down or a token or a disc or whatever, it's it's railroad connected to all adjacent spots. And I think that's a big difference between this and more complex um, train games like uh, Age of Steam as well as 18xx, where you put down track tiles that have little, you know, like a straight track or a little curve track and you're like making this webbing network. But in general, in cube rails games, where most of them have a map, you put a token down and it's it's essentially a six-way star. Everything is connected to everything else that's touching it. And that kind of opens up the play space to a certain extent. Um, but also just like as a general thing, in my perspective, um, abstracting it even more than that, Cube Rails games are stock market manipulation games with shared incentives that usually take less than 90 minutes. That's essentially my definition mm -hmm. of a Cube Rails game, which doesn't have the word cube in it at all. But again, I've played like 22 of these things now <laughs> and I've seen quite a breadth of them uh and that's kind of where i'm at and again even that kind of breaks things there's a game called iberian railways that is pretty much just a majorities game like you have cubes and a map but there's no stocks and it's kind of hard to say if there's shared incentives i don't really think there are so like you know <laughs> but it makes sense right you know people aren't going to want to yeah. design the same game over and over again like designers are going to play stuff enjoy stuff and then want to iterate and tweak things and then you get this wonderful variety yeah it's interesting that you guys talk so much about the auctions and the shared incentives because that was what, when I was watching the teach for this and I was looking at it, I was like, this is a pretty simple game. There's only three things to do on your turn. There's, there's enough going on, but there's also not a lot going on. I mean, 
you lay track, there's five companies and they all have shares that you're buying. And, and I could see that this shared incentive idea, which is kind of what I have attributed to the cube rails genre, having not played them, but understanding, you know, and listening to you talk enough about them that I was like, okay, this is going to be a very different ecosystem than I'm used to. You know, I primarily play Euro games. I'd never played one of these. I actually don't really like auction games. I don't really like stock games either. And I say that tentatively because I haven't played a lot of them. So, you know, you can say that, you know, kind of off the cuff, but then it's like, well, how many have I really played? You know, you know, I think I'm trying to think, I'm like, what's the last auction game I played like Biblios? And I actually love that game. So like, I don't know, and that doesn't really count, right? So it's it's interesting because I was initially put off by that first auction. My first thought was like, how on earth am I going to know how to value these stocks? And I was so grateful when we sat down. It was like, John was like, oh, Travis is going to go first. I was like, great. Because I don't know how much, <laughs> you know, R and triple R is worth, you know, on yeah. the first turn. Like, and, and I don't like overpaying for things just in general, which mm -hmm. is why I passed a bunch. And then, um, you know, if you watch the play, you'll see that very early into the game, which is like, I think the first or second turn, every, all of them did something smart. They like, um, they, they bought and they were able to almost immediately get a dividend. And I wasn't, and I was just like really bummed. And I was like, what am I going to do? Like, they have so much more money. This game is tanked for me. I'm going to spend the next <laughs> 65 minutes trying not to sound like, you know, that, you know, the player that's miserable because they're losing, but they're like trying not to be a Debbie Downer like right. on the thing. And I'm like, we're being recorded and it's horrible. And then like once the share, you know, suddenly the share prices are going up and down and things. And like, I mean, I said this multiple times where we're playing, it was like this roller coaster because of the shares that you would have seven money on when you your turn ended and you'd come back around and you'd have 45 and you'd be like, how did that happen? And I, <laughs> I loved that. I thought that was so fun that the, the way there's so many different ways for you to get money in this game that everyone else is kind of promoting that that initial auction, even if you don't like auctions, you're not really, you know, it's like it, it, mm -hmm. it immediately fades away because it just, it's just a way to start and then kind of just dive into it that arc of the game and the like flow of money i think is something that's important to talk about and like the for for me the emotional feeling of this game in the beginning i was struggling at the beginning i was like oh i don't think i'm gonna like this game very much and it grew on me a ton um and i think there's a couple of reasons for that and let me say first like what was hard about it at the beginning one is i felt Anastasia, like you were toast. Like I felt. I like was also those worried. First two rounds <laughs> I was, was like, like, oh my gosh, she's dead. Like <laughs> oh, this God. is a miserable play experience, right? Like, and the, the the fact that the game has the resilience and the elasticity to have you like rubber banded to you and I had very close scores at the end. I don't remember exactly, but they were very close. No, let's not talk about it. Six away. Um, <laughs> it was six away, but Nick was still on top, and and I don't. Well, to clarify, John won, so on top is pretty <laughs> relative. <laughs> it's true, it's true. Yeah. John, uh, in Anastasia's John did world, win. there is no other player. There is only Nick. <laughs> There's only Nick beating me. Uh, no, but it was because, you know, there was all those moments where I was choosing, you know, to what Travis was just saying, I was choosing, do I make, do I take, do I take points away from Nick? Because Nick and I had a lot of the same shares. So I was like, just deciding how, how do I help mm -hmm. or, or, or takeaway anyways yeah yeah but um, i interrupted but the thing that happened in this game that was that like and part of it too and this happens in so many cube rails games is you're so broke at the beginning that you can only do so many things and in a lot of games mm -hmm. there's more of that root building that you were talking about earlier travis right whereas like this one has like a little bit of root building and as soon as someone buys into your company you're like oh man i feel really crappy root building right now because it's just as good for you as mm -hmm. it is for me and that's normal. But the thing that I think actually started putting this game about like a, a head and shoulders above um, some of the other Cube Rails games that I've played is that union station dividend payout thing. Because all of a sudden, and this is, I think, part of the roller coaster that Anastasia was talking about, we would have money and then there'd be like an extra influx of cash, not just from selling your stocks, but from or, or for paying dividends, like the normal things. Like you would have like a we passed to this point and now everyone at the table is just a little bit richer. And the game mm -hmm. for me, I thought was the most tight and the most interesting between like if i could 
break the game into four phases like the first phase is the beginning of the game and then like every union station payout is being a separate phase of the game those like second and third Mm -hmm. phases in the middle where like money was tight but it wasn't so tight that you didn't have options so there was a lot of like push and pull between like ooh, if i buy Mm -hmm. this i know i can't buy a thing next turn but i'll be able to expand this rail because i'll have the most and i can see the board what it looks like no one's going to be able to like buy into this company in the same way that i have um and if they do it's going to suck for them compared to how good it is for me so great i can make my plan off of that and i I really liked that that flow of the game um i was i was impressed at how it like pulled us out of what felt like a a rocky first couple rounds (laughs) a spiral you're you're doing a downward spiral at that point (laughs) yeah yeah. (laughs) well and the 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 issue the issue with union station that that a lot of like hardcore cube rails train gamers don't like um is because all the shares are shuffled together face down yep. and traditionally you know in traditional cube rails games everything is available you know what's going to you know what's out there you can just pick from any company that you want and that's it and so my goal was to try and mitigate how detrimental it can be that a company doesn't show up until close to the end like you getting alton the black company which only has four shares in the entire game i've seen games played to where one person has that company and they're the sole owner of that company until like the last six shares come out now that doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to win but that does mean that they have a lot of money just kind of porting in and a lot of people don't like it a lot of people don't like the fact that you can that that just kind of that unknown factor of what's going to happen and whenever those shares are going to come out and the amount that the value is going to increase. Um, but to mitigate that, having a little more influx of cash so that people can you might not you might not get the company that you want, but you can still get another company that could be not near as valuable. But in the long run, you're not the since you're not the sole person that is pushing that company, you could buy it. Like there were a couple of times in here to where one of y'all bought something and then someone else built it into something else, which then triggered a dividend payout, which then you just like in a stage a couple of times were like, hey, and it was it was flush. I it was like I spent no money and I got it all back. And now this company at the end of the game is worth this full value that is worth even more now. Yeah, this is great. Yeah. There's two things I'd like to 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 reference um and there, i'm gonna find myself probably in this discussion continually pulling back because i am currently just absolutely in love with cube rails as an overall genre um and i love comparing all these things and um there's one thing i want to talk about how this is similar to many and there's there's two things i want to talk about how they're different uh, the first thing is the initial auction which anastasia was talking about a little bit earlier um before we started recording i was so tempted to pull you aside, Anastasia, and and give you a primer on what the initial auction is like for Cube Rails games, because um, Union Station it does nothing innovative with that. Um, they, a ton of Cube Rails games, in fact, probably most of them, start with an initial auction, just like this. Where you, and you, often the only randomness in the entire Cube Rails game will be the random order of those stock, those stocks being purchased. Sometimes it's not even randomized. But I decided not to actually give you a primer because it's your first time. I just wanted to, I just wanted to see you jump in, and that's why you know we, we had you bid last, and, and it worked out pretty well. Uh, I, I just figured you know adding bumper rails to you is probably not a good idea. But my my opinion on the initial auction is well, this is what scared me the most when I first started getting into cube rails games. Actually, before I even started getting into them, um, the very first cube rails game I really became interested in was Trans Siberian Railroad, which was. Um, sent to me to do a sponsored video uh, for my channel. And I was terrified because I know train game people love their train games and I don't like stocks, or at least as of February 2021, I didn't like stocks and I didn't like auctions. And I was like, I was really sweating. it. I was worried I was going to botch the video and just show this really poorly. But then I read through the rule book and I was like, that seems fascinating. I read it a couple of times. Then we actually played the game. And as I proceeded to play more and more of these, I realized that initial auction, it's just a setup randomizer. Like, there, you really can't know what things are worth. And, and in fact, it's kind of like a like an initial seed. You know, a lot of video games, like procedurally generated video games, have like a seed number that, that creates the world to, so it's different from one to the next. And this is just a player-driven seed. It's almost like, you know, everybody put out a number between one and three at the same time simultaneously. You all do it. And then that like randomly sets the situation. And if you have a game where everybody auctions high, that's going to manipulate the game in a certain way. And if everyone goes for low, that's going to be different. And it's just a randomizer. And there's, you can mess up in some of these games, but rarely is it easy mm-hmm. to. So that's like the big thing I wanted to say. Um, I, there's a couple other things I wanted to mention, but does anyone have any comments on that, that long essay I just read? 
Well, I'm just curious because you 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 say that and you say that that's kind of the, the starting of a lot of cute rails games but is, is it my understanding and maybe travis you can speak to this that in this game it's different because of those dividend payouts because it did feel like you needed to be a little bit more strategic with your auctioning that, that's how i approached it to be honest with you was was kind mm-hmm. of what you were saying john where i was just like oh, okay i can just throw out any number and i want to be cheap so i'm going to pass on the first two and kind of like wait for everyone else to get poor and then hope i get some good deals at the end but i wasn't really thinking even though travis had kind of pointed it out that you know i should consider paying less than the dividend spot or i should consider kind of like you know how that was gonna gonna play out and and my understanding is that that's unique to this game is is that is that correct mm-hmm. yeah yeah it, the the other interesting thing just to kind of like hang on what john was saying is that is that there's no company money in this game so a lot of cube rails titles they the money the the money that you initially bid in that in, in that intro auction um goes into the company and then the company spends that money to lay track across the board right so you place a cube mm-hmm. in hex this one costs two dollars you place a cube in this hex it costs five dollars and so and so you can and so in a lot of games there there is some of that that strategy of okay well i need to i need to spend I need to pay fifteen dollars for this share in this initial auction because I can lay three track and it costs five dollars a hex for me to lay here, here, and here. So cool. That's how that works out. Um, the money in 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 Union Station just goes away. It just goes to the bank, right? So whatever money gets paid, it just goes away. So instead of focusing on uh, the track lay on the amount of money that you need for the tracks, you're right. The money that gets spent in just directly needs to kind of position you in a good place so that that first one or two turns that you do that gives you that dividend payout Mm -hmm. i do think that the initial sort of setup of the auction in most of these cube rails games and in union station is tough i think that they're not hard if you play a couple of the cube rails games you like have a sense of what they're doing but they're not very welcoming towards players who have not played them before in order to make sense of them some people i think like that brutality almost right the like sense that you you have to make a decision even from the beginning i think that these games if anybody wanted to would be more accessible if those initial auctions had john you said three starting states rather than what feels like 30 starting states but Mm -hmm. really because i can buy multiple stocks like 900 starting states you know like it it could be like um pretty overwhelming for starting the game yeah that makes a lot of sense i want to go back um and kind of add an answer to it uh, Anastasia's question as well about like is that dividend thing unique for how it, it adjusts the initial auctions and I know we're harping on this a lot but I think it's really fascinating to talk about uh, from my experience most cube rails games have their own little thing like yes the, the the dividend payouts on this track is something I can't remember seeing in a different game but each game has its own subtle thing like Travis just said like many of these have a treasury so you want to make sure you bid enough money so that that company can do stuff. You have other games like Iberian Gage that does not start with an initial auction. There's zero auctions in Iberian Gage at all, but the first time you buy a stock in a company, you decide how much money it's going to be worth. And in that game, if I remember correctly, there's about like eight or nine different options. So it's not 30 or 99 like Nick was saying. Yeah. It's like eight or nine. And from my experience, it's it's more like mm-hmm. three or four. If you go too high up on that, <laughs> you're going to be in trouble. No one's no one's going to buy. Exactly. Yeah. And, and that's that, that's really the uh the influencer from one game to the next like a beard engage it's all about cooperation if you go too high then nobody else is going to buy it and you're going to have trouble i'm not going to go into the details for that one uh trans-siberian railroad has an initial auction it has those separate treasuries and a big part of that one is spending enough money so that you can maybe do a double buy on your next turn so like in each one of these games they have their own subtle thing that you can think about but i totally agree with nick that that can be intimidating to somebody who who hasn't jumped into all this and i guess my big overarching opinion is is trying to yell from the mountains like the initial auction doesn't matter that much don't don't worry too much <laughs> <laughs> you know just like get, well, get, get past it and get into it i'm glad that that's how that worked out i mean and that is a credit i mean as nick said to the elasticity of this particular game um you know that 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 was the case because you're absolutely right um you know that it having felt that I flubbed the initial auction, if you will, I could feel that unwelcoming. I could feel that sort of like, oh Mm -hmm. boy, I don't, I don't know how, you know, I mean, not not to harp on that, but, you know, sort of not sure kind of where, where this was headed. And I can see that 
it very quickly kind of resolves itself. And that's actually something I wanted to bring up, which I also think is sort of unique to this game, if I'm correct. And again, I, I like how I'm pointing this out and I, I, I this is my first and only uh, cube rails. Um, though I am intrigued to, to play uh, more. And I know that, that that john's gonna make sure that happens um <laughs> i'm so overjoyed don't worry. to hear that <laughs> i haven't been i i'm i'm ready to you know he was he was saying he was like i'm nervous that you know you're not gonna like cube rails and um you won't get to kind of see the depth and i really do want to see more of um the genre because it's it's cool and this was a great taste but i, I want to hear like how does this i think you guys said that the selling stock is also unique to this and i loved selling stock so actually i'm a little bit apprehensive to play <laughs> other cube world games where all i'm going to want to do is sell stock yeah. and um I, I might have already said this but in this game right i didn't lay any track in fact in the middle of the game i asked travis i was like has anyone played this before and any of your play tests and not laid any track and he said i don't think so <laughs> and i was like <laughs> i am I'm going to do that then. Um, that's what I said in my head. And there was one point where I almost did and it wasn't going to pay me out. And I was like, mm, not valuable. So I loved, just loved the selling stock. And in fact, I was, I was a little bit bummed. I didn't get to do more of it at the end. And, and who will know if I could have, I could have edged Nick out those six points. It's not about winning guys. It's not about winning. It's about getting third, second place. Um, because I was, there was always this really interesting tug between do I, do I sell the stock and thus devalue it, but then make it cheaper for other people to buy into it. And then it was, it was kind of fascinating too, just that there, there was different numbers of each of the stocks. So you were always kind of trying to calculate, you know, is this going to come out? Is this not? I actually love the randomness. I totally hear that people would hate that but i thought it was kind of representative of a market where you just you don't know what businesses are going to do and they're going to come out and when they're going to be more stock available and i i thought the selling was so much fun even just considering selling was yeah. so much fun because of the drop and looking at that delta and being like well if i sell now and who will know there was a moment where if i had sold nick shares would have gone down at least 18 money and I don't know, Nick, would you have sold at that point in, in that middle of that game before we get to the sharing, but just on this game, would you have sold if I had, if I had dumped? Absolutely not. You, no. when you, when you sold those, the idea was that, um, I would dividend again. There was a, there was a, that yeah. plus eight put me into a position where I could maybe dividend again. And if you sold, I could definitely dividend again. So I mm. was mm -hmm. insulated against that. Um, and I actually kind of want to expand your question about stock selling, um, in this game. And I want to talk about like meanness in games. Right. And so I enjoy this, right. I enjoyed like the playing defensively and thinking about that, that tapped into a really fun part of my game. And, you know, Travis, I don't know you very well, but from what you said earlier and the fact that I can see like root and oath hanging out in your background right there, um, <laughs> you know, you clearly are into playing a game where it's like, you're going to fight somebody, but John and Anastasia, you know, the two of you, I know you'd be more like Euro players and Anastasia, especially like you don't want someone to kick over your sandcastle. And I'm curious, Never. you know, what your, <laughs> your, the, both of your thoughts um, are about that meanness in these games and how that sort of like translates from what your general preference is in other style of games. And, and, you know, Anastasia, you're, you're gleeful about the, like the cruelty <laughs> that you inflicted upon me in this game, right? <laughs> I mean, that's a great question uh, for my part in that, because I, I actually have to ask myself if it had been someone else, you know, would I have the same way? You don't know. No, I, 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 I am gleeful about how much money I could make off of your stocks, Nick. Um, but I didn't feel like it was mean. And I, 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 I never felt like selling shares was mean for exactly the reason that you just pointed out, Nick, which is that if there's this point in the game where Nick had three shares of something, I had one. And if I sold it, the stock, the stock price was going to drop to the next row down, which is, a, I think, a minus six. So he would have lost 18 money if he had then sold. But to his point, there was a dividend spot right next to it. And he could have very easily gotten there by laying some track. And then he would have made and been and there would have been one less share out in the world. I think there would have been four at that mm -hmm. moment. And I think it was the 25 spot. And with the Delta, he would have then, you know, made back, you know, that money in that moment. And so it's like that thinking and that kind of pull made me feel like I was never mean to sell stock. It was like, I'm going to sell it. I'm going to bring it down. But then you're going to immediately dividend. So 
you know, you could almost argue that it's not advantageous to sell stock. I mean, I think it worked out for me. I didn't lose by, you know, such a terrible amount. Um, well, John had a lot of points, but it, it still didn't feel like it, it, you know, the strategy didn't work. Like it clearly worked on some level that would be, the scores were tight, but mm -hmm. I love that, that it, I was like, well, it's, it's only sort of hurting you considering how quickly the shares moved. I mean, you watch that game, money was like flowing. It was going out, it was coming in and everything was moving. So. Mm -hmm. A lot of early, I'll, I'll give you some insight, right? So early play tests, when I was play testing with some uh, very pro train gamey, super mean type of players, they were like, so whenever you sell multiple shares, does it drop one row or does it drop a row per share? Um, which that is, that that's just cruel beyond all belief, right? Because every row is only worth six right and so if you get to this point where you go well i'm gonna i have i have three shares let's say uh right the white the white company has eight shares for the entire game and so if if it's if you have two or if you have three and then other people have more you can just you know you could just dump the whole thing and go well look you you now lost 18 dollars per share that you own and now that you own three shares hey you know that's that's fifty four bucks. That's 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 really bad for you. Um, <laughs> that, that was early. That was early on, and it took one play, one play of that game for me to go. Mm, no, this this just doesn't it just doesn't feel good. Yeah. Um, which is an interesting because then on the back end, so people go, well, then why do you why even have that be an option? Well, well, early on, you know, early on in the game, you sell shares to make money to to you know. There were a couple times that early on it was just like you got four bucks. I'm going to sell this puny white share for fourteen dollars, and I'm going to have eighteen bucks now. I can actually buy something. Or at the end of the game, which is what everybody did with the green company of <laughs> green is maxed out. Yeah, the value yeah. can't go anymore it's as high as it can go and then all of a sudden let's dump a share let's dump a share and then that green value drops and then i come in last place um and that's just how <laughs> that ended up working out which is which is fine but once again you know selling shares just kind of doesn't doesn't happen in most q rails games because it's just weird like it's kind of this especially with the, with this one it it's it's weird because you sell a share, but then you could immediately reinvest in that company, which um, I did multiple get, times. Multiple <laughs> which times. you did multiple times, right? <laughs> you can sell a share, you could reinvest in that company, and all of a sudden you're like, oh well, hey, I got it for cheaper, and then it might pay out more. But whenever you sell a share, just like you said, it um it, it is removed from the game, so it's not included in any of the dividend payouts. So it's strange because you're dropping the value of the company, but then the shared incentives become small. Smaller. And so instead of five shares out, now there are only four shares out. And it could be that it's equal for the other player. But the issue is that you have now made more money. And so it's it it's a weird thing. I've played games to where nobody has sold anything whatsoever. And then I've played games like this to where it's just people are just trashing stuff left and right and <laughs> everywhere in between. And really it's, it's entirely player dependent. And I, it, it's funny because I know people that have played this to where at the very end, they just dump all their companies before you get to, before you get to that 18th dividend payout. Right. So it's, you're just like, let's just dump everything. And then they, they end up coming in last and they go, well, selling shares is bad. It's like, no, m maybe you just, did it wrong I mean, I don't know. but that's the fun thing is that i don't know what's right or what's wrong in this stuff you know i just i honestly truthfully i just wanted a third action right so you can lay track you can you can buy shares i needed something else to kind of yeah. manipulate and if this was all going to be about if this was all going to be about stocks and valuations then let's do it so that it can get knocked back down but yeah. then you can build into a dividend i mean it's just there are a lot of different kind of fun things to play with yeah uh, regarding Anastasia's question about meanness, this game was a lot less mean than I expected. And for the reasons that you said, I'm not going to rehash it. Um, but like when I first heard about the selling, it's like, oh, wow, it drops by six. That could be devastating. But, you know, the dividend pickups and, and all that kind of stuff is is really cool. I mean, comparing this to other Cube Rails games, I would say this is one of the least mean that I can think of. Like um, there's a game called Iberian Gage, which I've talked about a couple times. I, I love that game um, where that game is super about cooperation all the way down. It's an amazing cooperation game, but there are certain times in certain games, not, all, not every game, where somebody can just devastate half the table. They do a turn, they bankrupt the treasury of one of the companies, 
and then you know half the people just throw their hands up in the air and and that can be that can just knock you know those people out of contention entirely and you know yeah that's pretty mean but these games usually last 90 minutes or less uh, and and that's a big part of why I've fallen in love with them because they can be mean and you can have super consequential moments where you're like, do I whack over here or do I whack over there? And, you know, if your game gets turned upside down, it's probably almost over or there's not that much longer or maybe now you spend the rest of the, you know, 30 minutes or whatever, half the game, spoiling it for the person who did that to you or something like that. You just kind of get into it and that's fine. Um, compared to 18XX games, which, again, I'm not going to go into detail about here, but you can as far as I understand, always sell stocks in those games. Um, I've only played three of them. But uh, in a big part of those games, from what I've heard from people who really love them, is is about selling stocks at the right time to, quote-unquote, dump a company on somebody. So like, mm-hmm. oh, I sell these stocks. Now Nick, I've dumped it on Nick. Nick is now the president. That company is awful, and he feels bad. <laughs> and I feel good <laughs> because I, I, I made this company bad, and now it's super bad, and now I don't care about it anymore. And, um, and then you have three more hours to play or something like that, or maybe two hours to play if you're really good. And that's a huge difference yeah. from an emotional perspective, I think, the, the amount of time left after potential mean plays. Sure. Yeah. And I should also caveat that is like, in this play, I was being the mean player, but I also wasn't the one people were being mean to, right? Because, you know, <laughs> Nick, your rant in the middle about how I was going into boardrooms and like, you, you know, hatcheting <laughs> up companies. That's like, I was the one selling stock. Like I had the ability to do that. And I wasn't trying to say, try and like you were, you know, you had three orange, you know, three stock of the orange um, railroad. What's the name of the orange railroad? Uh, PFWNC. <laughs> PFWNC. Okay. So yeah. the orange railroad, no, uh, PFWNC. Um, but you were trying to get that one across the map, right? And, and over several dividend spots and, and get to its get to its home station, and I wasn't trying to do that. And so the, the tension I think you were feeling at certain points where you were like, "Okay, this is, you know, is someone else going to take my stock?" We didn't have a mo. I thought the whole game we were going to have like a run on stocks. Like that was always my thing. I was like, "Are we going to have a run on this?" And then no, you know, that didn't actually happen. I think John, you sold stock once, but I think I was the only player who sold stock like the rest of the game. I think so. Much. Six stocks were sold over the course of the game. I sold one of them, and I suspect you sold the other five. Yeah. <laughs> so, so anyways, I, the caveat to all of this is like, I don't know how that would feel. You know, I always have to kind of add that is it's, it, I think it's easier in games to be the mean player than to be the player that is being kind of piled on. And, you know, I want to acknowledge that in this because um, I'm curious to see how I feel about that meanness in other games, kind of to your point, John, I don't, I don't like games where, you know, halfway through, I, I, I don't know what else to do. Um, and I actually, I did think it was fun that it never really felt like anyone was really tanking anyone else, no matter what they were doing in this game. It really felt like things were moving, but they were they were always moving up and down very mm-hmm. flexibly. Yeah, I think that meanness in a lot of these games and in Union Station is actually part of the catch-up mechanism because these games don't tend to have catch-up mechanisms, right? And one thing that's cool about Union Station is like, I leaned into that orange company and I said, I'm going to make my money here. And John and Anastasia both have the opportunity to to really like cut my legs out from under me, um, cost me a fair amount of points. But I think that I'm not doing well. And I think that other people think that I'm not doing well. And so therefore, they're going to take their action to do something positive for them. Um, rather than sell this share because I was sitting on three shares and the two of you on one for many, many, many rounds. And uh, you, the, you, the both of you just, you sat with there with them, right. And, and didn't end up selling them. So I do think that that, that meanness is part of that. Like that it's that player interaction that you want to have in games, right? Like who's paying attention to what. And I think that, um, you know, Travis really felt like he was doing super well at the beginning. And then I think he got just devastated by the, the, the green yeah. selling. Yeah. <laughs> <that happened. laughs> Well, and I just bought fewer shares just overall. I'm looking at it. I mean, I apparently only bought five shares. And it was hard because I was the majority shareholder in four of those five shares. Like two of the three companies I was the majority shareholder. And it just it just it just didn't work out for me. And that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you were doing too much work and not enough uh profiteering. Yeah. That's actually yeah. really interesting to look at. <laughs> Travis had five shares. John, you had Six at the end, but you sold one. So you bought seven over the course of the game. And of yeah. course, after the end of the auction, you had two, two. because yeah. of the way the auction 
went down. And Nick, you also had seven, I believe, at the end and didn't sell any. But given the five I sold and the six I ended, I had 11 over the course of the game. So that's yeah. really interesting the way that that played out. I mean, I, I am curious um, to know, and, and this is just the way these these games may be or this game is, but it did seem like there was kind of a wide gap. I mean, we John won with 331 uh, points and then Nick was 30 below that. He had 301. I was six below Nick at 295. But then Travis, you were down at... 254 so that's that's a pretty wide gap um is that sort of normal for this game to have kind of like those scores yeah. or, or even the genre to have scores kind of all over the place like that i was surprised at how close nick and i were mm. um given everything but still we we were right in the middle when i say close we we actually weren't that close we were close to each other but not not to the leader or the or the tail yeah it's pretty it, it's pretty common whenever you're looking at not just this game but just kind of cube rails in general especially with games like this where you get the full value of the share at the end of the game because not not every game does that right so like chicago express at the end of the game it's the amount of money that you have on hand um but with this you just totally divest of everything that you have at the end and you take all that money and then really truthfully it is about the number of shares that you have so i find it really interesting that john eked out on top beyond nick because nick had one additional share but i think John had more cash on hand at the end. And then plus just like, and, and it's hard because orange was the most valuable company at the end of it. And Nick had three shares, but I think it was just cash on hand is what got you at the end for those extra 30 bucks. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. I think so too. Um, going back to before, I mentioned there were like two things I wanted to talk about. One was selling, which we've definitely covered. The other one was the randomness of the draw deck. At the beginning of this episode, Travis, you mentioned uh, Erie Railroad being an inspiration for this. And I think the first night that I played train games with you, like six months ago, um, you and a couple of your friends were like, let's play Erie Railroad. So you you taught it to me and we played it. And, and I loved it. I really had a wonderful time. And I could totally see that inspiration here in Union Station. And most other Cube Rails games don't have randomness like that. Like th th that's mm -hmm. kind of probably the biggest difference. Like I say, you can't sell in most of these games and that makes us pretty different. But that random draw deck for the stocks is is a huge divergence mm -hmm. and i like it i really do like it i like it in the Erie railroad and i like it here because of the the situations that it makes and it like sure that randomness could end up swinging the game a little bit towards somebody uh, one person versus somebody yeah. else but i also think it probably levels the playing field and makes this even better a starting off point for people who haven't played very many of these games um like i think i'm actually quite happy that this is the first one that anastasia got to play i think after playing it this was my first play I'm like, yeah, I think this is a good game to introduce to the genre. You don't have separate treasuries. You can deal with that if you like this and you want to play more slightly more complex games. It's a really good entry point to it. And um, I, I frequently I've heard people talk about Irish Gage being a great entry into uh, Cube Rails games. Um, I personally don't agree with that. I'm not actually not a fan of Irish Gage. But that one also has randomness in a way that most of these don't. Um, but for Irish Gage, the mm. randomness is... You pull a cube out of the bag to dictate which companies pay out. Whereas in this game, you pull random cards to see which companies do you buy. And it's like a difference of input randomness versus output randomness. In this one, it's it's input randomness. You know, the, the companies on offer, you make a decision to buy them or not. Um, and, and I really actually dislike the output randomness of pulling dividend cubes for Irish Gage. So I think this is a great entry point because of that. I made this, I made this statement in the middle of the play that the most boring games of this I've ever played is whenever people just lay track. Because one of the three in-game triggers, right, is that co all the companies run out of track. And the reason why I find that boring is because we actually had a really good, interesting play that two of the three in-game triggers were right next to one another. Yeah. Right? So if a couple more dividends got paid out, just one literally more. if one more dividend yeah. got paid out, then, then the game would have ended. So it could have been like, maybe somebody didn't do, maybe somebody didn't buy those last couple shares, which wouldn't have been the right decision i think um somebody not buy those last couple shares and then maybe r do a couple of builds and then the dividends pay out and then it, it all shakes out that way um but the reason why i say the boring plays are whenever people just lay track um it's because you don't get to see most of the shares like there are uh there are uh. 25 shares that are shuffled up face down and i play games to where only like like we had an interesting we had an interesting point in this game that the that the white share was on that plus three space for 
sixty percent of the game. <laughs> yeah. I've seen that. I've seen that clog up the offer queue so much that no one buys anything. That no one realizes. That no one realizes. Oh, maybe I should buy something to open up more space so that other things can show up. And instead, everybody just goes to lane track. And then now you have it to where only ten shares have come out in the entire game. And then you you get towards the end. Everything's every uh, all the companies have been, have built all their track, and then you do final payouts. And it's just kind of like, yeah, you owned the majority share of this company. You own the majority share of this company. And we all had one each, and there you go. And it's kind of boring. But what's fun is that Anastasia, she was like i'm not going to deal with that i'm going to dump companies which then influx which had a more of an influx of cash for her but then lowered the value and then people went but if i bought that plus one then that's going to pay out a dividend which then it's going to pay more money and so it's it's a lot of times that people just go well i'm just going to lay track because i don't want to sell shares and then people automatically think i just don't want to sell shares and because of that what ends up happening is that that gets clogged up at the top. That randomness happens because at the beginning of the game, we had the three white chairs up there at one point. And it was like, "Eh, this is really kind of garbage. And I thought it was going to be garbage (laughs) too. I won't lie. After the initial thing and and two white companies come out, I was just like, Oh, Oh, this isn't, this isn't going to go well. Um, Pleasantly surprised um, that it, that it did. And so there we go. I'm curious though, to that, so I was just, you know, kind of looking at it and I was thinking, you know, in my last play, I bought the la- <laughs> after all that, I bought the last white share and uh, it had already dividended, uh, dividended, dividend, paid its sure. dividend, whatever, <laughs> I'll go with it, dividended. Uh, so there was no, there was no real, nothing happened other than the value the share increase, which I actually want to comment on too, you know, in a lot of games, shares get more expensive. And then this is actually not that there's more value. It took me kind of a beat to realize it's not that it costs me more. It's that how much further they're, they're going to go up. I was several times I was like, why are you guys buying the more expensive one? And I realized, no, 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 mm. they're not. They're buying the one that in- increases the share price more. So anyways, yeah. I, I thought that was cool. Um, but my point here is that I, I bought this share. It took the share price up three. There was no dividend. But so my delta if you will was you know i paid 25 money and then at the end of the game i got 28 money but at the same time i gave john inherently six more money because he had two shares and i also gave nick the amount he beat me by six money so i'm kind of curious Mm. you know from a design perspective but that was really all i could do now that's because i had not like tracked the whole game and by this (laughs) point there was no track to lay i mean there was you could have laid white track (laughs) i could have laid white track um, but there was no value to me doing that. It was pretty much the only thing I could do. Um, I, I imagine actually, I, I don't, can you pass in this game? I, I don't I don't, I think I had to buy that, right? I didn't really have a choice. Well, laying track um, would have effectively been well, a yeah, pass. Well, yeah, yeah. Pa- laying track would have been passed. Sorry. Um, but she wasn't going to lay track. No. But I wasn't going to lay track. Uh, I had to buy that share because I wasn't going to lay track because I didn't want to, but also because I couldn't sell. And so I'm curious what mm-hmm. led you to, and the reason because of that is in the game after eight, uh, like on the 18th dividend the last three dividends that pay out you can no longer sell stock and i'm just curious travis why that why you decided to do that i would have loved loved to sell at the end there i think that would have actually been far more beneficial for me um in those last few turns and so i'm, I'm curious yeah um on it honestly it's because part of it is because of the meanness factor right because you get to the point and what i could what i could also see happening at the end is it's once once you know the end is about to occur then it's real easy to go well i'm going to i'm going to get rid of all my orange shares okay and then you're going to get rid of your white ones and then you're also going to get rid of your orange ones and then i'm going to get rid of my blue ones um, and then I have I have one green chair, but John has three green chairs. I'm going to dump my one green chair. And then he's just kind of like, I, I played a couple games early on that involved like three rounds around the table of people just dumping chairs. And it, mm. and it was just, mm. it was just kind of gross. It was gross feeling. It didn't feel that it, because when you, when you sell, it feels like, it, it feels like you're taking a step back, even though you're getting money, it kind of feels like you're not progressing the game. Yeah. Um, and then this way, this way it kind of at least pushes you to the end of, okay, you, you, you have to, you have to finish this game. You're you on know? final right. approach. You got to land the plane. <laughs> yeah. No, I know it's a cool, yeah. and it's cool because I wasn't lane track and because I wanted <laughs> to sell more. 
I was very acutely aware of where that track was, where that dividend track was. And mm-hmm. I was, I did feel the tension of like, okay, no stocks will still pay out, but you're, you're going to be frozen here. There's going to be, they're going <laughs> to shut down the stock market for a few days. So, um, <laughs> you know, figure it out. And, um, yeah, I mean, it, it doesn't matter. I mean, like it, it, it was what it was in that moment, but I, yeah, I was just curious about that. At this point, I, I want, I want to mention like, this has been a total love fest so far. <laughs> and, you know, uh, maybe part of it's because Travis is here. Maybe part of it's because Travis and I are friends. But um, I really enjoyed this whole experience. And I've been sitting here thinking, like, if I was to be critical about something that I didn't like about this play, I'm not really coming up with much. And maybe, you know, we got lucky. And the, the way the cards dealt out and the people that we were playing with um, just made this into, like, an ideal first play of it. Because I, I know I've heard um, from other podcasts and stuff that some people are more lukewarm about the game um, than I am currently feeling. And I feel like the rest of us around here. But I just kind of wanted to be vocal about that, that, you know... I'm not sitting here saying this is the, the best Cube Rails game I ever played, but I am sitting here saying I quite enjoyed it. What? I also won. I also won, you know? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, that's just kind of a, I don't know, a, a an asterisk I wanted to mention, but also I, I'm having a hard time finding something that, that rubbed me wrong while I was playing it beyond my initial terror that Anastasia had completely gone down in flames after the initial auction i was right there with you and i was like it's her first time if, her first time playing one of these games she's gonna hate these and never play them again uh and i was i was i was really happy to see that you came in a very competitive second place and yeah pot- third one- place third place third Sorry. place let's not competitive third place it's okay it's okay it's okay <laughs> not bitter um, I did mention it earlier. The only the, the sticking point for me was the beginning of the game and um just in terms of like feeling that. And I think I I didn't really pipe in about the the random stock part of it because I think that I would need to play it more to see, but I suspect that there's some number of games where the way that the stocks slip out, and you were basically saying this, Travis, just kind of like makes for a very odd or or more rigid flow. Um so that's mm-hmm. definitely something to to be aware of in that. I did think it was exciting, and like I said, for me I started off in a place where I was like, ooh, I'm not going to like this. And then it unlocked. And I think that comes with we had seen enough things that, right, there's sort of the, like, law of averages. And it starts, like, opening up the game. And um, that that was really what, what worked for me uh, in, in, in playing this. Yeah. Yeah, I think yeah. I agree with both of you. And, I mean, if I had two sort of question marks and, and this would come out with more plays, I think the first is is just that I do worry – that this could be very AP heavy for a certain type of player. Like I could see someone who would want to sit and calculate, you know, the Delta on every move that they make. Especially with the cell actions. To, especially with the cell actions to try and yeah. figure that out to, and, you know, I found myself doing that. And, you know, of course I, you know, <laughs> was trying to push myself away from that, but like, I could see that happening and I could see for some players that being sort of difficult to know that was possible and not do it um, could be kind of be kind of a little bit of a sticking point. And then I think kind of to that point, you there maybe that that kind of player um, who likes to kind of calculate things out and, and in different ways might find themselves in a few instances. And of course, please, Travis, speak to this where they might be frustrated that they're there is no good play. Like I think if I had thought too mm-hmm. much about my final play there, realizing I'm giving John and Nick each six points and I'm only getting three points, I might have been a little frustrated in that moment because I would have been like, well, there's nothing good for me to do and I'm just helping everyone mm-hmm. else. And of course, that's an inherent nature of shared incentives and blah, blah, blah. And they helped me and I helped them. But um, well, I'm Anastasia, curious. Kind I, do, of, I do want to say that you also yeah. got six points there. It was actually a wash for you, me and Nick, because you had two white. That was your second white. So you netted three on the one that you bought, and then you also netted three again. But also, like, that's sort of a pass. Like, your final turn just pushed, <laughs> essentially gave Travis negative six points, right? Okay. <laughs> For Travis. Which no, I, you're, which I no, definitely needed. <laughs> you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right, John. I'm sorry. Look at that. See, I can't even I can't even AP my own turns here because um, you're, you're absolutely right. So ignore everything I've been saying. Um, I think the kernel right. no. of what you're saying is, is, is totally accurate, though. I, I, yeah, yeah, that no, still would have been a wash, it, but yeah. Yeah, it, it, I mean, and, and it is. And uh, when, speaking to the point of 
not being able to make a good not being able to make a good play right <clears throat> so sometimes you're just kind of like well this is this is all i can do yeah and the that kind of happened to me early on too right there was that one term mm -hmm. where i was really kind of stuck and i was like what do i yeah. do that is good it for was me. like your second it was quite yeah. literally your second one where <laughs> you're was. just like you're like well i guess i'm just going to do this so. and, but it, but <laughs> yeah and john was yeah. like do you want me to cut out all this ap i was like well let's see how bad it gets like let's see if this is all i do just freak out about this well, 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 what's interesting with 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 a lot of Cube Rails titles is that whenever it comes to Cube Rails games, typically you can only do like three things on your turn, right? So if you're looking at kind of the more traditional Cube Rails titles, um, oftentimes it's put a stock up for auction, or it's uh, build some track, or it's do some other funky third thing, because most Cube Rails games have like this funky third thing that you could do. Mine was selling selling stock. Um, in in Irish Gage, it's uh, it's placed like a special interest marker, mm -hmm. or it's actually make dividends occur. You can actually make dividends happen. Um, in Chicago Express, it's place. Um, I, I never know what those are. Those those things. Those little the improvement white houses. Yeah, those, improvement <laughs> houses. Yeah, yeah. I forgot what it is. Um, so it, so it's one of those things, right? Um, but oftentimes in those games, you get to a point where you go, well, there's nothing good that I can do. There's there's nothing good, and, I'm, and you're just kind of stuck there. Okay, well, I could I because like there are times in games where you go well, especially in games that have auctions, <laughs> you sit there and go well, I guess I could put this up for auction, but I don't have the most money, so I'm not going to win it. And plus, this is actually like I can only afford this one company, and so I guess I could put that one up for auction, but John's going to win it because he's the most money, and plus he already owns two shares of that company, so he's going to get it. So that's a bad action. Um, I guess I could lay track over here, and if I lay track, well, you know that 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 reaches that place, but then that helps everybody else because everybody else owns shares in that company or i guess i could just waste my turn and place this special interest cube in this one place in irish gauge or i could or i could place this investment house in this one which is going to give me two dollars hooray you know um so there's always kind of that one like that there are a couple times in a game that you always get this stuck moment of well i guess i'm going to do blank and it really either it helps everybody or it just kind of pushes me on a little bit. Like I like I see that with my play a whole lot. Like towards like not even towards the end, but like I built track in green and in black because I was the majority shareholder and I built track and I was like, I'm just gonna lay track. This will be nice, easy going. And it just didn't work out for me, you know? Um, and it wasn't the best thing that I could have done on my turn. But once again, because of the randomness and the shares that come out, you can't really optimize what you're doing you can do it to an extent you could optimize it to know that hey there are two more shares left in the deck uh, but you don't know when those are going to come out and so there is this kind of weird sticking point that you're that you're stuck um but i will tell you in most instances they build and i love that you sold because you were like <laughs> forget it i'm going to I'm, I'm going to tip the balance a little bit and that's actually a stronger play because most people go well i'm going to spend my next three turns laying track and then eventually it's going to pay out and then hooray but you were like no i want an immediate influx of cash um, <laughs> i want money I that, want a lot it now. Of, that, that a lot of that a lot of people just don't do because they're like well i'm stuck i guess i'm you know going to be resigned to lay track and it's like yeah sure you can do that or you could do something fun with it and john was talking about this earlier my favorite part about cube rails games is that they're they're 45 to 60 minutes and so you can just do whatever weird ridiculous nonsense you you want in these games and then you're not sitting through a 30 minute teach a two hour play and then at the end of it go well that was a thing that i did by the end of it you can go oh that was that was just kind of wild and silly and fun and whatever and then we'll go on to the next one at that point yeah I actually had that thought at the start when I thought I trashed my game. I was like, okay, well, if it's real bad, maybe we can play it fast enough that we'll get a second one in because I can't. <laughs> like, we'll be like halfway through. I'll be like, guys, guys, we can't. No, but it was, uh, yeah, it's, it's it's fun and fast. And, and um, I don't know if it says how much I wanted to have fun or how much I didn't want to help the rest of you. I don't know what that says about me, but I, you know, in those moments, but... I think that's going to wrap up essentially everything I have to talk, say about Union Station beyond uh, I had fun and I, I'm certainly looking forward to playing this one more. Yeah, thanks for joining us, Travis. It was really great playing with you. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's my honor. Thanks. This is a lot of fun. <laughs> well, and yeah. tell us, so this game is on Kickstarter. Obviously, if you're listening to this in the future, you missed out, but tell us what's the deal with, what's the deal with this right now? 
Yeah. So, so New Mill Industries, um, they're the ones who are putting it out on Kickstarter. Um, obviously, depending on whenever you listen to it, it went live. It goes live on Kickstarter on October the 12th. Um, and for per my understanding, it's going to be on for three weeks. Um, it is shipping internationally as well, you know, based off of international shipping and all that other mess that's going on. Um, new mill is great in the sense that they do very quick turnarounds on games. So they're, they're actually anticipating being able to start shipping this in January or February. Um, so within three or four months and having seen three other campaigns from new mill, that is quite on track they'll be able to get things out pretty quickly um it is a really small game it is bonkers i played with it in person for the first time it actually fits inside of one of those prior those small priority mailboxes like (laughs) it fits right in there and so everything's kind of it's kind of like itty bitty and compact which is really adorable um but i but i also love it because because it's highly transportable. I mean, you can toss that in with everything else. You can have a 45 minute experience of, of stabbing each other, or yeah. whatever you want. Mm-hmm. You know? <laughs> well, this has been a really wonderful discussion uh, and just a, a fun thing to do. Uh, a, a great way to spend some time. So thank you uh, for joining in, uh, especially Travis. Uh, I'm really glad we were able to have you on as a guest. This is something I'm kind of yeah. hoping we do more in the future if possible, uh, because I don't know, being able to pick your brain while actually playing it was, was a lot of fun. All right. Well, that's going to bring this episode to a close. Thanks to everyone out there for listening. I hope you enjoyed this discussion. And if you have any questions or comments about anything we said today, then leave those as a comment on the YouTube version of this podcast episode. You can find a link to that in the description of this podcast. As always, I'd like to thank everyone who's been supporting this channel, including these producer-level Patreon supporters. If you too would like to directly support the channel in the creation of future videos like this one, then please go to jongetsgames.com support. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please click the like button for it down below, as well as the subscribe button for the channel. Thanks for watching.